Welcome once again to this revision class for UGC NET provided by Professor Academy Chennai. In today's class, we are going to look at MLA Handbook 9th edition, Works Cited List. We are going to look at how to prepare the list of works cited. And in India, a student of English literature, when he or she writes a research paper, they are asked to follow research methodology. And when we say research methodology, we are asked to follow the methods prescribed by MLA Handbook, which is in its ninth edition now. And why do we follow that? Primarily to avoid plagiarism. What do you mean by plagiarism? So when we say plagiarism, it means intellectual theft, you know, borrowing someone's idea and claiming as our own. So that's ethically wrong. So how to avoid that? So when we write essays or dissertations or theses, this is what you have to do. Number one, when we borrow an idea from someone, we have to acknowledge that idea. So in the essay itself, so which we call in-text citation. So while writing the sentences, while writing the essay itself, in the body of the essay itself, we can acknowledge the source. We can do it in two ways. Number one, we can say according to G. N. Devi. So here is an example. Straight away, we can mention the name of the person from whom we borrowed that idea. So according to G. N. Devi, comma, the greatest strength of Indian culture is multilingual, multilateral education. So I have borrowed the idea multilingual, multilateral education from G. N. Devi one of the famous Indian uh, critic, literary critic, as well as uh, a crusader for Indian languages. So <clears throat> check him out. So since I borrowed this idea from him, so I have put his words in double quotes. So you can see multilingual, multilateral education in double quotations. After that, you have parenthesis. So round bracket, 129 close bracket full stop which says in the book written by g n devi i have borrowed this phrase uh, from page number 129 so you can write like this or without mentioning the author you can straight away go to the concept and you can mention the author in the parenthetical documentation look at that the greatest strength of indian culture is multilingual multilateral education then in parenthesis, you can say only mention the second name of the author, Devi, D-E-V-Y, space 129, page number, then close bracket, full stop. These are the two ways. When a reader reads this, and if the reader wants to know which book, from which book we have borrowed this idea, that reader will go to the work cited list at the end of the research paper or thesis or dissertation. Where alphabetically, if you check, maybe Devi, D-E-B-Y. So this should be the entry there. So Devi, comma, G-N, full stop. So you have to invert the name, full stop. Then name of the work after Amnesia, full stop. Then publisher's name, Orient Longman, comma, and year of publication, 1992, full stop. So this is a method. So there is a method to this way of arranging the uh, details. And that's what we are going to look at today. So tomorrow we will look at in-text citation. And in this class, we are going to look at how to prepare this work cited list. Number one. So what we are going to do. So number one, you, you should know this basic. And this is what we are going to follow throughout the other entries for other entries. So number one, single author. If the book you are consulting is written by just a single author, what do you do? You just invert the name of the author. You bring the second name or surname first. Nagarkar, comma, Kiran. So original, Kiran Nagarkar. So you just invert them. Nagarkar, comma, Kiran, full stop. Then name of the book, Kakold. So if it's a book or drama or film or anything that is big, you know, you can put it in italics. So, Kakold, full stop, which is in italics, then full stop, 
then it was published by harper collins publisher comma then year of publication 2017 full stop then there is an another important question <clears throat> If there are a lot of years in the copyrights page, what should I do? So look at the screen here. First published in hardback in India in 1997, then copyright at Kiranagarkar 1997, 19, 99, no, 1999, first paperback. Then uh, towards the end, we have a 14th impression 2017. So when we have many years of publication, so you should follow the latest publication. So you have to mention the latest publication here, 2017. So that's the rule prescribed by MLA Handbook, ninth edition. And you might have a doubt. Okay, what if my uh, what if my readers think that this is the late? I mean, this is the original year. So if you are keen about that, then you can also do this. You can mention the original publication date. Nagarkar. Kiran, full stop, then Kakol, full stop. Immediately after the title, you can mention the original publication date. So here, original publication date, 1997, full stop, Harper Collins, comma, 2017, full stop. So you tell your readers that you are following the latest version of the book, that is 2017, but it was originally published in 1997. So this is how we give the details very clearly to the readers. Okay, if there are two authors, if there are two authors, first we have to invert only the first, uh, first author. Larry Collins and Dominic Lapierre's Freedom at Midnight, a very famous book about India's freedom. So if you are referring to that book in the works cited list, what do you do? First, invert just the first name, first author's name. Collins, comma, Larry, then that should be a comma, then and you have to use the word and then the second author's name you should not invert just put it straight dominic lapier that's all full stop then it's a book freedom at midnight full stop it should be in italics then evan books publisher comma 1975 full stop that's the year of publication original year of publication so this is the method for mentioning two authors, a book written by two authors. Okay, if three or more authors, what do you have to do? So here's a famous book often uh, read under post-colonialism, post-colonial school of criticism. The Empire Writes Back by Bill Ashcraft, Gareth Griffith and Helen Tiffin. So what do you have to do? When you have three or more authors, just mention the first author, then we can say et al. So first author, Bill Ashcraft. So in what? Ashcraft, comma, Bill, comma. Then you say E-T, space A-L. That means et al. In Latin, we say and others, right? So this is the, these are the words you have to use, et al, then full stop. Then you mention the, book's name. The Empire writes back. Then you can see, look at the colon there. That colon says what follows is the subtitle. So this is the subtitle of this book. Theory and practice in postcolonial literatures. Full stop. Which is important. This book is very important uh, in under postcolonial studies. So they might ask the name of the authors or subtitle. So remember these details. Then if there is there are a number of editions. You can mention the uh, edition. For instance, uh, I follow the second edition. So you say second to then superscript ND, second, then edition short form ED full stop, then comma. Then you, you go for Rudlich, name of the publisher, comma, year of publication, 2004, full stop. So this is how you have to make the entry for three or more authors. And in this, we have also discussed how to go for subtitle. If a book has a subtitle, use call. Then if you have edition, after the book's title, mention the edition, okay? Then let's go for the next entry. What if we have translators? For instance, recently we have this novel, Hindi novel translated into English, which won uh, Man Booker International Prize. 
So we have to mention the translator too. So first you mention the author. Sri Kama Gitanjali, invert the name, full stop, Tomb of Sand. So that's the name of the title novel in italics, then full stop, translated by. So you need not shorten translated. You just mention it in full. Translated by Daisy Rockwell, comma, then publisher's name, Hamish Hamilton, full stop, to the 2022, full stop. So this is how you have, you can mention the name of the translator. Or if you think, or uh, if your research is more on translation, then you can uh, mention the translation translator first. In that case, what you have to do? Bring the translator first. So invert the name, Rockwell, comma, Daisy. So that's the name of the translator in inversion. Then comma, you have to mention the uh, position or role. So you have to say translator in full. Then full stop, tomb of sand, full stop. That's the name of the work in italics. Then you say by Gitanjali Shri. So by says it is written by the author. By simply say by B in caps. Then Gitanjali Shri. Here you need not invert the name. Write it in uh, straight order. Comma. Then name of the publisher Hamish Hamilton. Comma. So 2022. Full stop. So this is how you mention translators. So what about editors? If a work has an editor, almost a similar method. So first you invert the name of the author, Milton, comma, John, full stop. The annotated Milton. So that's the name of the work in italics. Then full stop. Edited by Burton Raffle. So instead of translated, you say edited by. Then the author, the editor. Uh, um, you mentioned the name of the editor. Then comma, publisher, Bentham Classic, comma, 2018, sorry, 2008. Full stop. Okay. But as I told you before, if you are giving importance to the editor, for instance, the next entry, the editor is so, so famous and we want to draw attention to that and her contribution. We have Jean Paul Lagri, a novelist and also a short story writer, American. So Lahri, comma, Jean Paul, invert the name, comma, mention the role, editor, full stop. And this is the name of the collection. The Penguin Book of Italian Short Stories in italics, full stop. Then Penguin Classics, that's a publisher, comma, 2020, full stop. So here we, we say Jim Paul Agri is the editor of this uh, collection. And this collection has a lot of short stories translated from the Italian by other uh, translators. And Jim Paul Agri is also one of the translators, but she's not primarily an editor. We mentioned that role here, okay? So this is how you mention the editor. Next, if there are two or more authors, what do you do? So we follow the method we used for two or more authors. So similarly, we say, so invert the first editor's name, Solomon, comma, Barbara, H, comma. So you, we invert the first uh, name of the first editor. Then we say, and Eileen, Panita, so that's a second author's name. Then comma, we say editors, E-D-I-T-O-R-S. So that's the role they played, full stop. Then name of the work, passages, then it has a subtitle. So we go for a colon, 24 modern Indian stories, full stop. Then publisher, Signet Classics, comma, 2009, full stop. Then what, what if three or more authors? In that case, remember, we use a doll. So first author, invert the name, Schorer, comma, Mark, comma, you say, Ed, space, all, A-L, then full stop, then comma, you say editors, full stop, okay? So you simply add Ed, all, full stop, then comma. So which, which says, and others. There are also other editors. I'm mentioning only the first author. Then the name of the work in italics, criticism, colon, the foundations of modern literary judgment, full stop, and the publisher's name, Hardcourt, comma, Brace and World, comma, Incorporation, then comma, you say 1958, full stop. Okay, so this is how you mention more number of editors. Then what if there are editors as well as 
translators or if the translator and the editor is the same person. So this is how we do. So look at here. So I'm talking about a famous literary critic, Russian literary critic, Mikhail Bakhtin and his works. So first you mentioned the author, Bakhtin, Mikhail, full stop, name of the work, problems of Tostovsky's poetics in italics, full stop. You say edited and translated by Carl Emerson, okay? So if that's how it is printed on the first page of the book, then that's how we also mentioned here, edited and translated by Carl Emerson, comma. Then name of the publisher, so here U of Minnesota P, P in caps, U in caps, U say, U means university, University of Minnesota Press. So it's a short form, U of Minnesota Press. Whenever uh, you know, we talk about press, university press, we can shorten this U and P, okay? When we talk exclusively about university press, okay? Other words, we need not shorten it. So U of Minnesota Press, comma, 1999, full stop. Then again, you have Bakhtin, next entry, comma, Mikhail. This time we go for this work, full stop. Speech genres and other late essays, full stop. So this is the name of the work in italics. Then translated by someone, edited by two other people. But we need not panic, we just write as it is. Translated by Vern W. McKee, comma, edited by Carl Emerson and uh, Mikhail Hallquist, comma, U of Texas P, University of Texas Press, comma, 1986, full stop. Okay, so that's the short form, UP. Uh, so this is how we do. So just look at how the roles are mentioned on the first page. And we follow that in the entry. So here, translated by one W. Mackey, then comma, edited by two, two, uh, two critics or uh, two editors. We have Carl Emerson and Mikhail Holquist. And pay attention to the entries because here I'm not just talking about the entries for MLA handbook, following MLA handbook. I'm also using some of the famous works across literary criticism and literature in this class. Okay, next. If we have an illustrator, follow the same method. First, invert the first author, I mean, first uh, author's name, George Eliot. So, Eliot, comma, George, full stop. Romola, that's the name of the work, full stop. That's an historic, uh, historical novel. Next, you just say, illustrated by Frederick Leighton, comma. Then, Broadview Press. Here, we are not shortening that press, P. Because it's an individual publisher, we just say Broadview Press, comma, 2005, full stop. So we follow the same method we followed for translator or editor. So translated by, edited by, same way, illustrated by. Okay. And next one. What if we don't know the name of the author of the book? For instance, uh, the Anglo-Saxon epic. So we, in English, we have this epic Beowulf. We don't know the name of the author. It was an anonymous work, unknown author. So in that case, you just bring the title first, Beowulf, full stop, because we don't know the author, name of the author. So bring the title first, then whatever detail we have, we can mention. So translated by Seamus Heaney, comma, then publisher's name, www. Norton and Company, comma, then 2000, full stop. And this translation is very important. It's a new verse translation by the Irish poet Seamus Heaney. Even this could be a question, possible question in net exams or other competitive exams that you take. So pay attention to this entry. So for this class, I'm following, uh, I don't want to just mechanically go for the entries. So I have included a lot of examples from English literature so that it will be a, a for two use. One, you're knowing, uh, get to know, you can get to know the entries and other, you can get to know text like this. Okay, next one. What if it's a work in an anthology? This we do often, right? 
for instance nizam ezekiel's poem background quest casually so that's a a poem but it is published in an anthology but we have to mention the but we refer only uh, the poem we have to mention that but we have to we, we should also mention the anthologies and edit and everything so this is how we do first author invert the author ezekiel comma nizam full stop then if it is a poem a single poem you should put it in double quotations remember that if it is a larger work like a play a film or novel you put it in italics but if it is a single poem then you have to put it in double quotations so double quotation background casually full stop afterwards you close the quotation mark okay then name of the uh, anthology 10 20th century indian poets so that should be in italics why so that's a larger work comma then that work was edited by r parthasarathy so you mentioned that edited by r parthasarathy comma then oxford university press university press you can shorten so oxford up comma then year uh, 2002 comma then we have to mention the page numbers the page numbers of that particular poem that we are referring to here so p p small p small p back to back without any punctuation in between p p com uh, full stop so which says page number 34 to 37 so in order to say two you use a uh, dash it's called a uh, n dash then full stop 34 n dash 37 full stop so if a reader reads this entry it says okay we have used okay this researcher has used uh, background casually the poem by nizam ezekiel it is published in the anthology called 10 20th century indian poem poets edited by r parthasarathy published by oxford university press year 2002 and that poem is from page number 34 to 37 similar way what if if it's a collection of dramas what should i uh, do for uh, i mean what should i do with uh, that single work simple if it's a play put it in italics right so do that but you can also notice that this time i didn't invert the name of the author gao zingjian g a o space zing x i n g j i a n see in mostly in chinese names uh, the second name comes first so in that case we need not invert so gao is the second name right a uh, kind of a surname or family name so which comes first so generally what we do second name comes second i mean family name we invert that so in this case we need not invert put as it is gao zingjian full stop bus stop is the name of the play put it in italics full stop then translated by kimberley bezio full stop and we have to understand this particular work is translated by kimberley bezio right because in this anthology there are other uh, plays which which is trans uh, which are translated by other translators but we are more concerned about this particular work so we say translated by kimberley bezio and we can understand only the bus stop is translated by kimberly bis then anthology theater and society colon subtitle and anthology of contemporary chinese drama comma which is edited by so we say edited by hyping yan comma then publisher and east gate book comma 1998 so that's a year comma then we have to mention the page number of bus stop that's the name of the play so we say p p small p small p without any punctuation in between then full stop we say number 3 n dash 59 so page number 3 to 59 so full stop so this is how we go for a work in an anthology so which is very essential because we refer to a lot of uh, anthologies and but we mention only or we just refer one only one work so this entry will be very useful for you next one
what if a particular work has an introduction or a preface or foreword or afterword so you just mention the name of the author of that particular introduction or preface or foreword or afterword first so in word here we have the french philosopher jean paul sartre so you bring sartre first sartre comma jean paul full stop and if that preface or introduction doesn't have any title then you just mention that role i mean mention that uh, uh whether it's an introduction or preface you just mention that preface that's all I need not italicize or put it in double co- double quotations just to mention as it is that's all for here preface full stop then the name of the book in which it is published so the wretched of the earth that is that should be in um italics comma by francis fanner so that's the name of the author comma translated by richard philcox comma crow press comma 2004 comma then we have to mention the page number in which that preface is published generally they come uh, before that right before uh starting of the page number 1 2 3 so here they have followed the roman letters so mention that page number pp uh, full stop then x l i uh, i mean triple 3 uh, then uh, we have this n dash then l x then double i then full stop okay so this is how we do that but in case if that preface or introduction or foreword or afterword has a title what do you do put the title in double quotations because it's a small work it's a short one so for instance we have a work here and we have an introduction so edward said associated with uh, post colonial criticism known for orientalism his famous book so invert the name said comma edward full stop then this is a title he has given uh, to his introduction so name of the title before that you put it in uh, double quotations so open quotation so homage to jo sacco full stop then close quotation then name of the work palestine which should be in uh, italics then comma by jo sacco that's the author then comma publisher fantagraphics books comma then year of publication 2003 comma then page number p p full stop then you mention uh, the page numbers page numbers of that uh, introduction so one or uh, you have i small i then n dash b five so full stop okay so once we know the basics then we just add on add on all the pieces of information okay next one now let's go for print journal so when we do research we have to consult secondary sources and secondary sources add strength to our research so we go for print journals or online journals first let's look at print journal so here same method what do you do first author invert it eagleton comma terry full stop then the uh, you know name of the article in double quotations i contain multitudes full stop then close quotation then name of the journal in italics so you say london review of books comma Uh, i have given the first page or the title and the details below in the on the screen just look at it it has a volume number so you shorten that b o l b small v b o l full stop shorten it then pay, uh, volume number 29 comma you have issue number which is 12 so again you shorten it instead of say number you say n o n small then full stop then 12 comma then year of publication 2007 comma then page number of that particular article so pp full stop 13 then n dash then 15 full stop so 13 to 15 full stop so similar no similar to the earlier one so only that here we mention volume number issue number and uh, year of publication so other than that it's almost same so this is for print journal what about online journal so online in the sense database we have databases especially for students of english literature we have databases like jstor j s t o r 
or we have project views. So these are the databases we often use. What is a database? Database is like online storehouse, online library. Uh, a storehouse where we have articles from around the world collected in a single place. So that's a database. And we gain entry to this database and we can access the journals or uh, almost all the journals in the world and the articles in those journals. One, we can uh, gain, uh, gain access by, through the college uh, we, where we study or universities where, uh, where we go to the digital libraries. From, uh, from the digital libraries, we can get access to this database. Or individually, as an individual, you can subscribe to this database. Um, you have to pay the, pay the fee and you can access this. So two ways. Anyway, so these are the databases. A database is like a library and in which you have a lot of journals and you can access each and every journal and each and every article in that. So here we have, I have chosen uh, Umberto Eco, Italian semiotician. And look at the right side of the screen. So this is the, uh, this is what you see when you access, gain access to this particular article. So journal article, it's the name of the article, the theory of science and role of the reader. Then below you have the name of the author, Umberto Eco. Then below you have the name of the journal, the bulletin of the Midwest Modern Language Association. Then you have volume number, volume 14, then number, issue number, then spring, uh, I mean season, then year 1981, page number, everything is there. Then below which you have uh, two things. Number one, DOI, which means digital object identifier. Then we also have permalink, I mean permanent link, right? We have both. Sometimes we have both. Sometimes we have uh, either DOI or permalink. In that case, what you have to do, you have to use one of them, not both. Either use DOI or JSTOR, but recommendation, first you have to use DOI. First preference goes to DOI. It's more like a permanent link which will never disappear. So we have to go for DOI. Okay, let's go for the entry. First invert the author, eco, comma, ambato, full stop. Then name of the article, since it's an article, like a single poem, put it in double quotations. So quotation mark, the theory of science and the role of the reader, full stop, then close quotations, then name of the journal in italics, the bulletin of the Midwest Modern Language Association, comma, DOL, full stop 14, volume number, then NO, full, uh, full stop one, so issue number, comma, then season, if there is a season, I mean, uh, spring, atom winter, then you have to mention that. So you say spring, but yes and small letter, spring. So small, lowercase spring, space 1981, comma. Then you mention the page number of that particular article, PP full stop 35 N-45 full stop. Then, then you have to mention the database. So this is the database through which I, uh, I read this article. So J S T O R. That should be in italics. Okay, it's a database, bigger one. Then comma. After the comma, you have to mention that uh, H T T P S. One, you have to mention the D O I or permalink. When we have both, uh, you should go for D O I. Okay. So in this article, we have both. So we can go for D O I. We can also go for permalink, okay? Uh, but not both. So that's why I'm giving or. Okay. Then uh, after that, full stop. So this is how we go for uh, databases, online one. Okay, what if it's not from a database? It's from the internet itself. So uh, from the internet itself, what you have to do, you have to go for uniform resource locator URL. For instance, we often, read poems from the internet. In that case, what do you do? For instance, from uh, Edgar Allan Poe. So Poe comma Edgar Allan full stop. So name of the work, The Raven. So which should be in 
double quotations, full stop, close quote, then name of that website, Poetry Foundation, which we use often now, uh, students of English literature to read uh, poems. So Poetry Foundation is the name of the website, which should be in italics, then comma. Ne then you mention the URL, Uniform Resource Locator, full, right? Then after that, full stop. So this is how you do it. And this is very important because um, using MLA Handbook 9th edition, you can uh, use anything as your secondary source. It can be from an entry from Twitter, Facebook, email, or online resources, anything, or Instagram, whatever it is. And for uh, social media, so this is how you follow, especially for Twitter. First to mention um, the name name of the corporate or name of the person. If it is person, follow, you know, uh, invert the name of the author. If it is a corporate name, put it in full. Business Insider India, okay? Then you have a square bracket, open square bracket, because a Twitter has handle. So you say at BI India. So that's that handle, Twitter handle. Then close square bracket, then full stop, okay? Similar way we follow for, we use for a person, if it's Virat Kohli. So Kohli, comma, Virat, then you have a square bracket, then at I'm Kohli, then you have square bracket, full stop, okay. Then most of the time, uh, the message, the tweet is very short. So you can mention the tweet itself as a text, as the title, the text as title, okay. So here, double quotation. So this is the tweet itself which doesn't have a name. So if you do not have a name, of course, uh, for Twitter, you mention the tweet itself, the text as the title. Indian billionaires held on to 99% of their wealth while rest of the world lost over 1 trillion. Full stop, then double quotation. Then we have the source, Twitter, right? So media, that should be in italics, Twitter. If it's Facebook, whatever it is, put it in italics. Then comma, 3 June 2022, comma. So that's a uh, year, I mean, uh, publication date, comma. After comma, you mentioned the URL. HTTPS, twitter.com, then it goes on and on, uh, uh, followed by series of numbers, then full stop. Okay, this is URL. And there are certain rules in the sense if there is no name, I mean, there is no, sorry, uh, there is no date of access in that place. Or what if there is a date, uh, I mean, uh, no date of access, what do you do? I mean, not date of access, uh, publication date. If there is no publication date, what do you do? So you have to uh, provide the date of access because internet sometimes is not reliable or sometimes, uh, the web, websites we follow or the websites we refer to disappear or altered or removed. In that case, what do you have to do? Or the work we refer doesn't have the publication date. So in that case, we have to mention the date of access. When you access that date in the internet. Okay. So this is what you do. First, as usual, you go for inversion. Ganguly, comma, Shyam Prasad, full stop. Then this is the name of the article. Put it in double quotation. Translation of Don Quixote into Indian languages, full stop, close quotation. Then the name of that website, Centro Virtual Cervantes. So that should be in italics, comma. Then you go for the URL, HTTPS, full, then full, then full stop. Then uh, you mention the access, date of access. So you say accessed, A-C-C-E-S-S-E-D, -E -E space to October O-C-T. Uh, October should be in short, full stop, then 2017, full stop. So if when it comes to months, uh, May, June, July, you can mention it in full. Other months, you have to shorten it. Jan, J-A-N, February, F-E-B, March, M-A-R. Uh, only for September 4, yes, C P T for September, four letters. Otherwise, we go for three letters, shorten it. And why we go for uh, date of access here? Because this, we don't know when this article is published. 
there is no uh, publication date mentioned in the article number one number two we don't know whether this website will be available in the future so if you doubt that or if you think that it will be altered or it will be removed better you give the data of access okay next one what if we have doi permanent link url you have all the three simple if you have all the three you have to go for as i told you before doi and if the doi is not preceded by http or https in your source we have to precede the doi with this for with the following https colon then doubles forward slash doi full stop org forward slash then you go for the doi number or whatever it is and for url you can uh, omit http for doi it it is necessary it's compulsory so if for url you can uh, remove it and another rule if the url runs more than three full lines and is longer than the rest of the entry then you can truncate it you can shorten for instance there are urls which uh, runs for several lines four or five or six lines in that case you, uh, in that case you can shorten it uh, maybe first one line or the important source the first uh, name of that website or something else so you just mention that and full stop which we can do okay next one and after doing all these things you know uh, okay you write entries at the end of your research paper this is what you have to do you mention this these words works cited which says these are the works that you cited in the body of that work in your research paper or thesis or dissertation at the end of the your work you have to say works cited uh, bring bring that to the center then you list whatever work you have referred to in alphabetical order so i have done that here look at that first work bakhtin comma mikhail so b ne, then i go for nagarkar comma kiran so n then po okay so you have to arrange the entries in alphabetical order okay so bakhtin comma mikhail then the entry and you can notice that if you if notice that bakhtin comma mikhail full stop Uh, problems of Tostovsky's poetics, full stop. Edited and translated by Carl Emerson. But the entry runs runs on to the next line, second line. All right. So if uh, an entry runs on to the second line or sub subsequent lines, what you have to do? You have to leave half an inch from the margin. You might have noticed this in all the entries in the earlier entries we discussed in the uh, throughout the class. so follow this whenever an entry runs on to the next line the next line you know you should begin it with half an inch from the margin so this is called hanging intent what is the purpose it says that this is not a new entry this emerson university of minnesota press 1919 full stop this is actually belongs to the first entry okay then you go for the next entry nagarkar comma kiran full stop kakol full stop Harper Collins, comma, 2017, full stop. Say here it is very short. It is not running on to the next line. Fine. Then, but the next line, I um, mean the next entry, Poe, comma, Edgar Allan, full stop, Raven. Then you have Poetry Foundation, comma, and the URL is a lengthy one, which runs on to the next line. So you have to leave half an inch below that from the margin. Then you say HTTP. Then it goes on and on. Then full stop. so this half a inch says this url is for the previous one i mean the first this entry so it also looks good if you look at the screen okay we can say okay bakhtin then agarkar po then next entry okay so this is called hanging intent which we have to follow so that we know this is not a separate entry it belongs to the first one okay so do this for your research and uh, we have come to the end of today's class what we have done we have looked at how to prepare the work cited list for your research paper or uh, ma or mphil 
thesis or dissertation or PhD thesis. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe to Professor Academy English. That's a separate channel for students of English literature offered by Professor Academy. So thank you so much. See you tomorrow, same time, seven to eight. Tomorrow, again, we will look at MLA handbook, but we'll go for in-text citation and how we should do that. Thank you.